So let's look at solving this problem um, where we want to identify any missing pieces of information. So you can see we have what looks like maybe a two-step reaction because we have something um, is in a reversible reaction with this, which could also react with that in an equilibrium with this. So <laughs> what do I have here? So to start with, in a question like this, I would want to identify what kind of organic families um, am I working with. So I recognize this one pretty quick. This is an alcohol. Right? This is an alcohol. And then this here, I have an alcohol group right there. But when, in, in based on what we're learning, when you have an alcohol group, in a kind of more complex molecule. I could recognize this as a simple alcohol fairly fairly quickly. Um, it happens to be ethanol or ethyl alcohol if you want its common name. So here, I want to look at what else uh, my carbonyl carbon is attached to, or at least what seems to be a carbonyl carbon. And when I look at that, I notice that up here, so I have an alcohol group going this way, and then I have what looks kind of like an ether group going that way, or a, an alkoxy group, a carbon-oxygen-carbon group. And when I have a hydroxyl group and an alkoxy group bonded to the same carbon, that I recognize as the functional group of a hemiacetal. So I have a hemiacetal and an alcohol. So I could go that way for that, or I could go essentially then how do I make a hemiacetal? So let, let's actually go ahead. I think this way is a little bit more, a little simpler and more straightforward because it's a, it's a substitution reaction. Essentially, we're going to, we're going to substitute something. Um, or, or if you want, we're, it's kind of a condensation reaction. So walking through what happens in this reaction, we're going to end up, what does a hemiacetal make when it reacts with an, um, acetal? It makes, or a hemiacetal with an alcohol, it makes an acetal. So a full acetal. So I want to create then uh, whatever the acetal would be that would be over here. So what happens in this reaction is we are going to remove a water molecule. We lose the hydroxyl group and it leaves with the hydrogen of our alcohol. So we lose the hydroxyl group on our hemiacetal and it reacts with the hydrogen on our alcohol. That's going to make water. That's not an acetal, right? <laughs> um, so then I, but this portion right here, this alcohol portion is going to come and bond in, in place of that. The, so we have, because we have an opening here essentially on this carbon and we have an opening on this oxygen. So it's going to come around and bond right here. So the acetal structure that's going to get created don't know if I quite have enough room. Let me do some moving here stuff real quick. I'm just going to move it around, give myself a little bit more room. For now, we'll move the water too. Water and create my acetal product. A lot of this product is going to look the same. It's going to be identical to the original. I don't impact my alkoxy group. I don't impact my hydrogen. My difference really is right down here. In place of a um, out hydroxyl group, I have this alkoxy group that came from my ethanol molecule. Because when you react, a hemiacetal can react with an, al an alcohol in a reversible reaction, acid and heat, of course, almost always, <laughs> to create an acetal. So we've done like that half of of our um, of it, but how did we get to the acetal in the first place? What do we need to react? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this portion down here for for room, right down here. Uh, what did we react react initially to get the hemiacetal? Well, hemiacetal is created from an aldehyde or a ketone reacting with an alcohol under those acidic conditions. So if we wanted to, we could add acid and heat right there. And it is reversible. So I just need to figure out from this structure what my alcohol and my aldehyde or ketone, it's not and, or ketone, were. So let's start with the alcohol because I think actually it's the easiest because your alcohol derived from your alkoxy group. So you take a look at what your alkoxy group is, so you identify it. Maybe we put a circle around it or something. Here's my alkoxy group. 
I identify my alkoxy group from there. And I can see this is this is fairly simple. Let's draw it up here. That's probably not a great color for uh, trying to really see it. There's my alkoxy group all by itself. And if I want to turn that into an alcohol, I would just add that, right? And now I have methanol. So my reactant, my alcohol reactant, um, was methanol, CH3OH. And that's where that portion of this molecule came from. So did I have an aldehyde or a ketone? Now, you can come, uh, approach this in a lot of different ways. Um, one, piece, one thing you can do is you can just look at, so I know that this group, this is, group isn't going to be on my final structure, so I'm going to kind of put a little dashed line through it so I can remember, that it got added. So it's not a part of my original aldehyde or ketone, so I'm focusing then on this portion. And a lot of it is going to look the exact same. We're going to have CH3, nothing happens there. CH2, nothing happens there. CH2, all of the excitement happens right here in this portion of the molecule. And, and here's the really thing. If you're not sure on aldehyde or ketone, does it have a hydrogen still or not? If it doesn't have a hydrogen, it was a ketone. If it has a hydrogen still, it was an aldehyde. So how do I, how do I get back to this, this view as an aldehyde? Well, in order for this reaction to have happened, we had to have added this hydrogen here. So let's mentally kind of remove that hydrogen. So I have my carbonyl carbon. Oh, what color should we do? I don't know. Let's see. So I have my carbonyl carbon, and it's going to be bonded to, it's still going to be bonded to a hydrogen. It doesn't lose this hydrogen, right? It doesn't have this group at all, because remember, that group is already accounted for over here. Um, and I could put the oxygen down. I'm going to go ahead and put it up just because it's going to help me with my final structure. So I'm going to put that oxygen up. And I, I know that that hydrogen isn't here because it actually went up. It really didn't go up. It came from here. It's already accounted for over here. So how do I turn the structure then into an aldehyde? There we go. So this aldehyde right here, which would be what, one, two, three, four. So this is butanal. Butanal can react with methanol to create this hemiacetal structure. And this hemiacetal could react with ethanol to make this final um, acetyl, acetal or acetyl structure. So I can, I can take the hemiacetal and I can get back. And this gets into that objective of writing the, the reactions to generate hemiacetals or acetals. So aldehydes or ketones can react with alcohols to make a hemiacetal. And you should be able to tell from looking at a hemiacetal like we are here, what aldehyde or ketone and what alcohol it derived from. And you should also be able to, uh, if I gave you these and told me to make a hemiacetal, you should be able to do that. Or if I gave you a hemiacetal and I said react it with an, an alcohol, you should be able to make that. So that's how that relates to that objective and I hope that that uh, clarifies a little bit that practice problem I threw up there for you.